Welcome to the MN channel. It is Sunday, the 8th of December 2013, and I am your host, Ant Man, listening to some Alexis on Fire. If you guys have ever heard of Alexis on Fire, I love Alexis on Fire. But, anyways, this is besides the point. I have an article in front of me from WND.com under the column Education, if you believe that or not. And this article is uh, titled Claim Humans Came from Chimp Mating a Pig. Bizarre new theory reveals latest evolutionary explanation for mankind's origin. Um, this is written by Drew Zahn. Now, if you don't, if you're not familiar with evolution, let me tell you what evolution is. It is a lousy theory, not even qualified to be a theory because uh, through scientific observation, you need something to observe. You see, evolution has nothing to observe, so therefore, it's not even a theory. Um, it is a, it is a a lot of imagination is what it is um they always have to change their theory over time because it, it always gets proven wrong you know for um you know if you guys are familiar with dr ken hoven dr ken hoven has this study that's really amazing that he shows how evolution has changed its theory throughout all this time like for hundreds of years like a hundred more than a hundred years it's changed its theory saying that the world is this old no it's this old no it's this old now no well, here is the latest in the idiot department of the evolutionary psychology. That rumor is starting to spread again. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh that's, how the, that's how this article starts, I guess. That rumor is starting to spread again, the one that says your uncle was a monkey. Okay, chimpanzee. And your aunt was a pig? Or more likely vice versa, claims geneticist and species hybrid, uh, hybridization scholar Eugene McCarthy. You know, I don't really care what your credentials are. Um, if you guys really want to see this, I have a I have a friend who is a college graduate and a major in uh, science. And um, we have been in some really, really crazy altercations over creation and evolution. And I'm talking about we've, om we've almost beaten each other because of this. You know what I mean? And um, we're going to put up a video of us debating these things. But I'm not sure if I want to go through with it. Because it's kind of a waste of my time if somebody's just going to spend their whole time just talking down to me. Because this is the way that evolutionary psychologists, or the psychology of the evolutionist is. Is that they think that they're smarter than you. When they start talking about millions and millions of years, it gets all sanctimonious. It gets all, oh, I understand this, but you don't. You see, the devil in the Garden of Eden promised you, what? Secret knowledge. Knowledge that other people don't have. This is the oldest trick in the book, ladies and gentlemen. People trying to tell you that, hey, I'll give you a letter of recommendation or a certificate or a degree if you just get indoctrinated with this crap that has absolutely no base. It's a baseless theory. Or more like vice versa. Da -da -da -da. Earlier this summer, McCarthy publicized on his website, macroevolution.net, the notion that humans evolved from a distant history cross of chimp and swine. Well... I'm not going to argue that the uh, leftist, atheistic uh, liberals are exactly that. They're kind of stupid. Like, <laughs> sorry, I wish I had like editing and I could just edit that out because I don't mean to be so harsh and, criti and critical, but hey man, if you want to believe you're a chimp and a pig, hey, go ahead. The theory popped up again in newspapers around the world over the Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks to London's Daily Mail, which resurrected the story November 30th in summary, McCarthy proposes that while it's been demonstrated, humans share many genetic similarities to chimpanzees' several outward characteristics, including relative hairlessness, blue or other fair-colored eyes, a protruding cartilaginous uh, nose, a layer of subcun... Sub subcutaneous fat beneath the skin and so forth oh subcutaneous i was yeah i was once an emt so i actually i actually know these things subcutaneous i haven't even said that word in so long <clears throat> suggests humanity had a distant ancestor of a different species what is the other animal that has all these traits he asks ri ri uh, rhetorically of course he's saying it rhetorically because he's telling you you see you, it's kind of like how the uh, Catholic Church back in the medieval times was telling people in Martin Luther's time, don't read the Bible because you can't understand it. That's what scientists are telling you today. Don't try to observe things for yourself. We'll tell you what's real. Because when you really go and observe things for yourself, you understand that this is all bull. 
Anyways, um, what is that? What is this other animal that has all these traits? He asked rhetorically. The answer is Sus cro crofa, the ordinary pig. Unsurprisingly, the, Ma the Daily Mail reports Dr. McCarthy's hypothesis has come in for substantial criticism from orthodox evolutionary biologists and their creationist opponents alike. I bet the creationists are really having fun with this right now because I, I guarantee you this guy is, he means it. He's like 100% serious when he's talking about this, which is like, to me, it's just comedy. It's unintentional comedy. It's, but at the same time, it's more sad than it is funny because... This guy's going to hell because he doesn't believe in God, man. That's just a fact. When it comes back, when it comes down to the end of the day, why do I do this? Because I believe in God, and I want to bring this to your consciousness that there is a God, and there are people like me out there that believe in God to the to the T, my friend. I do not doubt a single word in the Bible. If God says a donkey talked, I'm going to believe that. Why? Because he's God. He can do whatever he wants. You see, the the evolutionary. Psychology allows you to only think so little about, I don't even know what, when I try to even put, put my mind in their perspective, I just, I feel like I don't even think anymore. Because what do you, what happens to you when you go to school? You're, you're being indoctrinated by this? You're not even being taught how to be a critical thinker. You're, you're taught to accept a, a, a presupposition that we evolved from monkeys when it's not even proven. There's no evidence for it. Absolutely zero. This is the funny thing about the Bible. It's never been proven wrong. The thing with evolution, it's never been proven right. Uh, let's see. Indeed, McCarthy's idea was in initially mocked, prompting one science blog to host a contest to name the first primate porker offspring. Meanwhile, late night TV comedian Jimmy Kimmel spoofed the theory on his July 11th program. Another thing about these evolutionists, and I'm really going to, I'm going to jab at you guys right now. You guys have no manners. I was watching this uh, Kent, Kent Hovind I bet this was a pretty old video, too, because he's in jail now, if you didn't know that. I believe that he was put in jail. You know, it's probably his own fault, but, you know, people were absolutely targeting him because he's right. But anyways, he went to Berkeley. He went to the University of... Uh, yeah, he went to Berkeley. And um, he pretty much started to... He started to just talk about creation, and it seemed like nobody had ever heard, ever, creation at Berkeley. But... Um, People that were arguing with him, were they really had baseless arguments. And I, it, the, the reason why I bring up that you guys are, have no manners is that you guys have a, a, a guy like Kent Hovind, whether you agree with him or not, you show him some respect because he's a doctor, because he's he studied way more than you. To, to, to assume that you think you know more than him is really stupid because you do not understand how much reading, how much studying it takes to be on that guy's level. And, and, and you know what, man? And somebody's like, and he made a joke. He kind of set himself up, but he's like, you know, if somebody, if somebody in here, you know, uh, try to experiment with that, and you know, try to have sex with a with an ape, and try to see if they would come out with something different, then I wouldn't be surprised. And then somebody said, yeah, your mom. And I was really like, oh, I was disgusted by that. How could how could somebody say something like that? You know what I mean? Like to somebody who's, it's just because. Your mind is so poisoned by evolution that you're going to defend it even though there's someone in front of you that's trying to show you how stupid it is. You're going to defend it because you paid to get lied to. You get, you are paying to be indoctrinated and brainwashed. So of course you're poisoned and you're going to defend your own stupid theory that somebody made up and gives Charles Darwin credit for it when he didn't even really think of it at all. Anyways, back to the article. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys know me. I'm a huge creationist. However, McCarthy is not listed in University of Georgia th uh, Georgia's 2013 th uh, through 2014 campus directory as either faculty, staff, or student. He did, though, author Handbook of Avian Hybrids of the World with Oxford, uh, Oxford University Press when he was a postdoctoral associate in the laboratory, or laboratory, laboratory, what is this, Dexter, or UGA professor Jeffrey Bennettson. McCarthy even admits his contract to publish his chimp pig idea was terminated after his editor at Oxford received criticism from the scientific community. I can already see things stemming from this. With the with the whole transhumanism coming in, it's emerging into our society now where transhumanism is sexy. You see all the, the uh, mutant movies that come out in Hollywood. It's cool to be like half human, half something else. It's becoming like a trend. It's becoming like something that people are starting to like... Even science is starting to try to... Uh, it's really disgusting when you think about it that they're actually... They're, they're breeding hybrid humans and hybrid other things in the laboratory. It's really disgusting. Uh, 
you know, we, we have we have already stepped over the line that, you know, we're not supposed to step over in this world. And we are already, we're trying to create, you know, there's a, there's a video game that I absolutely love. It's called Final Fantasy VII. The, this game is so freaking amazing because I've been playing it since I was a little kid. But the more that I play it nowadays, and I, yes, I still play it amazingly. I know how old and, you know, the rudimentary the graphics are t compared to nowadays but i love that game the storyline is so like there's so many like um subliminal messages in it there's transhumanism in it there's one world government in it there's all that stuff in that game and it's just amazing because that is exactly what we're doing now we're trying to like create like superhumans now and we're trying to create them for god knows what you know what i mean like Today, uh, McCarthy explains, rather than submit the manuscripts for yet another round of lengthy and perhaps fruitless review, I decided to simply push publish it on the macroevolution.net website with a slightly altered title on the origins of new forms of life and new theory. Biologist David Menton, who spent over 30 years in the Department of Anatomy at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, and who today writes and speaks for answers in Genesis, explained WND while McCarthy's pig ideas won't fly. The whole idea is so ludicrous, I can't believe I'm discussing it with you, said Menton. I think it's going too far to even call it a hypothesis. A hypothesis has to be a testable, has to be testable in some way. Not every speculation qualifies. You have to be able to imagine an experiment to potentially disprove it. So, what sort of critical experiment could we do to disprove a claim that modern humans are the result of chimp-pig crossbreeding, uh, Menton asked. Th this uh, is at best speculation, which is the entire evolutionary psychology. It's all speculation. There's, no observ There's nothing to observe. It's just a bunch of people with a ridiculous imagination. If you guys have ever seen Evolution vs. God by Ray Comfort, it's a really cool uh, documentary that Ray Comfort put together. The part that I like about it is a part that comes out in even the commercial uh, where this lady says, you know what your problem is, is that you don't have any imagination. And then Ray Comfort's like, you're absolutely right. In the Bible, it tells you that your imaginations are, in, that they can be deceptive. Your heart's deceptive and your mind's deceptive. When you go by your feelings and your emotions, man, you get tricked into doing the wrong thing because not everything you feel is right. You know what I mean? I know that I hate darkness but I also know that I am as much darkness as what I hate because I am in this body. I am in this vessel that is prone and vulnerable to sin. I have to overcome it with the spirit. You see, this is all mumbo jumbo to you guys because you don't believe in God. Right, evolutionists? But to us Christians, it makes perfect sense. Believe me. Uh, it's true. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Menton also isolated reasons why posting a pig as humanity's ancestor is flawed, particularly McCarthy's pointing to hog heart val valves in human cardiac surgery and the relative hairlessness of pigs and people. Yeah, you know what you know what's funny about apes and humans is that everywhere where men, where men grow hair is where apes don't grow hair. Apes grow hair all over their body except for their face and their chest, which is where men prominently grow hair. So somebody explain that to me, right? Um, let's see. Um, let me see how much time I got here because I've been ranting a lot. Well, anyways, I don't got enough time to read this ridiculous article, but I'm almost done with it anyways. But if you want to look at it, uh, I'll put I'll put the link in the um, right there in the description for you guys because I love you so much. But let me tell you guys something. Don't believe what your favorite scientists. You know, Isaac Newton never considered himself a scientist. Only our postmodern you know, freaking educated people of today consider themselves scientists because it's like a title. It's like, oh yeah, I worked for this. I don't care how freaking hard you work for something. It doesn't make you right if you say, uh, you know, tomatoes are blue. You know what I mean? It doesn't make it true just because you're a scientist. I can go ahead and observe things scientifically too and see for myself that everything that Darwinian evolution claims is a bunch of bull, you guys. Go, go into that whole thing and see for yourself, but I'll put the link, so God bless.